So before we start, first thing to do is to plug the MIDI cable into MIDI A in. Also make sure on your USB interface you have the MIDI cable in A out, like I do. So we need to set the keyboard up to receive the system exclusive messages from the computer. So here goes. First, go into the global menu, find the system exclusive, Use the value keys to switch that to on. Next, make sure the MIDI channel is set to A01 because it's the channel we're using. The next thing we need to do is switch the protects off. So we scroll to the protect menu and then we use the up and down and value keys to switch all the protects off. The keyboard is now ready to receive SysX from the computer. All that remains is for you to execute on the computer. Sending SysX back to the Korg T1 is again relatively simple using MIDI OX. I'm going to skip the configuration because I put the configuration into the video where I set, told you how to save uh, the T1 configuration or the T1 sounds and sequences etc to the computer. So this time round all I'm going to do is I'm going to load the T1 config. So I go file, load profile, and I select Korg T1 MIDI settings. Click open and I've now loaded my MIDI input and output settings into MIDI OX ready to work with the Korg T1. Now we have to select the file that we want to send from the computer to the T1. So what we do is we go view and SysX to open up the scratch pad. And then we go File, Send SysX File. At which point a window will open asking me which SysX file I wish to send. So I'm going to send my Korg T1 factory settings SysX file. So I select that. And when I click Open, the file will immediately start to transmit if I've got the settings right. As you can see, the file is now transmitting and the keyboard should be recording the fact that it is receiving data. The keyboard has now started receiving from the computer. As you can see, it's displaying a, a message saying it, it is receiving data. So the file load process to the T1 is a much slower process than the file receive process, obviously, because we had to slow the transmission down to ensure the T1 could process the information we were sending it. Now the file is finished, the data should be on the T1 and that is all we have to do with the computer. So we'll just close down the scratch pad, job done. When the keyboard finishes receiving data, the message just disappears. At this point it's worth saying that you might have to switch the T1 off and on uh, to recall the new set, new data settings that you've just pushed down to it. Um, I have to be honest, in my experience, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So sometimes you don't have to switch it on and off, and other times you do. So um, this is legacy tech for you. Um, it's entitled to play up every, time, every now and then, I suppose. Following the data load, we now need to reset the keyboard back into a safe mode. So first thing, is to reset the protects. So using the global button and the page menus, we go back up to the protects, and using the up and down and the value keys, we switch all the protects back on. And just to be safe, I'm just gonna switch the system exclusive off. Global button, system exclusive is on. Switch it off, job done. I've been told it helps the channel out greatly if you hit the like button if you enjoyed the contents of this video. If you want to be notified about future videos that may be made for the channel, please hit the subscribe button.